Hey art nerds, today I'd just like to hang out and paint with you guys. Do a little bit of doodling in one of my watercolor sketchbooks. So this was sketched using pink color eno lead in a Canson XL watercolor sketchbook. I actually really like the Canson XL watercolor sketchbooks and when I just want to paint but I don't want to do anything too serious or too involved, this is one of the first things I grab. I'm also painting with my Daily Driver watercolor palette. These are all of my favorite watercolors over the years. Carefully honed and selected. I know it doesn't look curated. There's like a million colors in there, but they are the product of years of reviewing watercolors and then cherry picking my favorite and the ones that work best for me to put into a palette. So it is a hodgepodge mishmash of lots of different brands, lots of different colors. And I use all of these colors when I'm painting seven inch Kara. I like using a lot of convenience colors, having a lot of convenience colors handy so I don't have to mix quite as much. And I'm starting with Sennelier's Ultramarine Blue Deep. It's a really beautiful ultramarine color. And I'm using it to paint the, the white, the shadows of the white, on the teacup and on the flowers. And this is actually part of a series of illustrations that I'm currently working on, just kind of like tea or hot beverages throughout the seasons. And this is one of the contenders for the 7 Inch Cara Volume 2 postcards. I've got a lot of ideas in mind and it's often hard for me to edit or to be super duper selective about things. Sometimes I have to like make the thing and then I can decide. But I thought doing a set of tea and teacup postcards would be something really nice that people might not they might not only want to send out to other people I mean that's always my hope is to get people communicating but also might want to put up and enjoy so this is definitely one of the contenders but I also have some ideas floating around for something that's a little bit um, more adventurous, a little bit more imaginative, and something that might inspire people to go out and have some of their own adventures. So I'm kind of playing with a few ideas right now, but this is definitely a strong contender. And this sketch was sketched a couple years ago. Um, I'm getting around to it now because sometimes you draw something and you really like it and then maybe you're not confident in your skills or you don't really have enough time to work on it or you're not sure how you wanna handle it so you just let it sit. Well, this one was one that sat for two years but I'm glad I'm finally painting it and I'm glad it's inspired me to create some others and I hope you guys will keep an eye out for that. I just finished the pumpkin spice latte one or I guess pumpkin spice chai if you'd like and I am working on a lavender and chamomile illustration as well. So if you like tea inspired art and you like tiny cute things, that could be a good mashup for you. So I'm painting this in what I kind of think of as like one of my B styles where um, it's all like local color and we have strong shadows and rather than using contrasting or shadow colors to create shadows, it's just darker variations of the same color. And what I like about this style is it gives it a really kind of fresh sun-kissed sort of look. And I wanted to keep the colors really vibrant and light and I wanted to avoid over mixing and over layering since I'm working on a cellulose paper in a watercolor sketchbook. So right now I'm applying a really cool yellow and I'm going to paint uh, marine blue on top of it, Magello's marine blue. And that's going to give me a really nice kind of fresh and lively green. It's one of my favorite ways to paint green is mixing phthalo blues or cooler blues with cooler yellows because you get these really vibrant colors.
And this is a fairly small watercolor sketchbook. I think it's like the 5.5 by 8.5 or something. And maybe it's like the 7 by 10. I don't know. It's the smaller of the watercolor sketchbooks that Canson offers without being so small that it's difficult to use. It's actually a really good size, particularly for travel, for sketching, for doodling on the go. And I don't know about you guys, but I really kind of get stuck in these mindsets where I start thinking everything I have to do or everything I do has to be this like really elaborate piece with all these other things going on. And uh, that honestly, that mindset keeps me from painting because then you build everything up and you need a lot of time to do that kind of watercolor and you need a lot of space to do that watercolor and you need a lot of brain space to think it through. Whereas small watercolor sketches kind of like this one, they don't take as much time. And take I, I will start one, like I started this one around eight o'clock in the evening, put it away at 12 and then picked it up and finished it the next day. So maybe eight hours, but I was doing other things as well. And it takes up far less space. It's actually easier to record because I can pull the camera in close rather than when you're working on a big one, you either have to have it pulled really far back and people can't really see what you're doing or you have to kind of pick and choose what you're gonna show and you can't always get a good angle on it. So working smaller like this definitely has its advantages. And then there's just something so satisfying about finishing a watercolor sketchbook. I know some of the artists that I watch here on YouTube, they have like every page has a different, really nice illustration. Um, for me, I kind of work between whatever paper is working with what I want to do at that time or I'm working in whatever sketchbook has that paper. So when it comes to, I finish like inexpensive sketchbooks all the time because they're just filled with whatever. But when it comes to finishing like a watercolor sketchbook, that's a much rarer occurrence. It takes me much longer to do that because I might have like six going on at any given time. Um, but this and a few others are kind of what's keeping me from finishing out that Canton XL. So I'm hoping, because there's a lot of pieces that even though they're older, I still really like the line art on them and I want to finish them. So I'm kind of hoping I can push myself to spend the time just kind of playing around, exploring and doing something that's a little bit low key and just kind of enjoyable, something that's more relaxing because you don't have to think as hard when you're doing it than some of the bigger pieces, especially since volume two, what I have to finish for volume two isn't watercolor related at all. So I won't be doing any painting specifically to go into seven inch care volume two at this point. So for those strawberries, I use Holbein's Cherry Red. It's a quinacridone red and it feels very synthetic. It's like a bluish red and it really pops off the paper. It definitely gives you that strawberry feel. Now I could have gone in with masking fluid and masked off the seeds and that would have been a smart idea, but I was really just kind of doodling and just kind of going with the flow. So I didn't really think to do that until it was too late. And you guys can see what I meant when I was talking about the marine blue on top of a cooler yellow. You get a really fresh color and then you can add in the shading using that marine blue or you can use, you know, a phthalo blue or even a turquoise might give you some really nice colors. And I'm just adding a little bit of shadow, making it actually feel like it's part of the page with a little bit of watered down ultramarine deep. And for the shadows on the strawberries, I'm using one of my favorite colors. I use this color all the time. It's Daniel Smith's Naphthamide Maroon. And it's just a really versatile color, especially when I'm painting Kara, where I use more natural kind of colors or more subdued sort of colors. It gets a lot of use in my palette.
So one of the pluses to just kind of doodling like this, uh, sort of less formal, less structured watercolor painting, it's not as loose as it could get. I'd really like to get looser with my watercolors, in fact, because I feel like that looseness brings in a lot of vibrancy. But one of the nice things about it is that vibrancy. It feels a little bit more lively. It feels like you had more fun painting it and it feels less restrictive than if you're trying to do something that's really tightly rendered. And it also kind of invites play. It invites you to try different things, to take risks, and to make mistakes and learn from it because the risks are actually quite low. You're not ruining this big piece that you spent all this time on on this expensive paper. You're, you are possibly ruining a piece in a watercolor sketchbook that's like 10 bucks at Michael's. So it's sort of that lower barrier entry that I really enjoy when it comes to watercolor. I really enjoy seeing other people's more sketchy stuff, their looser stuff. That's more inspiring for me because I can kind of see their thought process and I can see the hand of the artist. And I can also see when they start to come up with new ideas and new ways of handling the material that I want to try out for myself. So after I finished painting this piece, I wanted to ink it, which is not unusual for me with watercolors, but I'm using colored inks for this. I'm using Tombow's Furunosuke brush pens. They come in a variety of colors. I really like these things. I have a feeling they're going to end up in my 2020 top 10 this year, but they're just so playful and I don't necessarily see people using them for line art as much as I'd like to since they are so great. I know Tombow kind of markets them to brush calligraphers or modern calligraphers and I really kind of feel like more artists, especially more comic or cartoony style artists, need to jump on board with this because before you had uh, brush pens like this that were alcohol marker proof and waterproof like these are, you were stuck using colored technical pens to do this and some people like using colored technical pens for this. Um, but I don't like having to go over the same area multiple times to build up line weight. So I think that these brush pins are fantastic and I highly recommend you give them a shot. You've probably seen them in a few videos. You're definitely going to see them in many more here on this channel. So when I'm selecting which colors I want to use, I try to be pretty strategic. So for example, I'm using blue on the whites, but I'm also using blue on the greens of the leaves since green often shades to kind of a blue green or a darker green color. I want the inks to stand out. They're adding contrast. They're adding color. They are accenting the piece. If I do just used black ink, which you can definitely do if that's what you have, it would have deadened the piece a little bit and we would have lost some of the liveliness. And then finally, once it's inked, I'm going in with a little bit of white gouache just to add in a few more highlights. For this style of lighter watercolor, I use the white of the paper a lot. I leave a lot of the white of the paper, but I still like being able to go in and selectively add in additional white highlights, tighten things up, or even hide those pink pencil lines. They're not nearly as noticeable as you guys probably thought they would be at the start of the piece. You don't have to use pink. I like pink because it tends to go well with many different skin tones, but you can use whatever colors work for you and the kind of art you want to make. And one of the cool things is they do dissolve a bit in water, so they're not going to stand out as much as you think they will, and they do tend to tone the piece, which is why I recommend you use colors that will complement your work or stand out and draw attention, kind of depending on what goal you have in mind.
And here we are, just about finished. I really enjoyed painting this piece and I'm glad it's inspiring future pieces. It was a fairly quick illustration and I really enjoyed painting it. It was good to just kind of relax and cut loose a little bit more with watercolor and kind of leave the normal, very rendered way that I work. If you guys enjoyed this video, please check out some of my other watercolor videos here on the channel. And please consider checking out my comic, 7-Inch Kara, which you can read for free at 7inchkara.com. We just finished successfully kickstarting Volume 2, which will be available for pre-orders soon, so please keep an eye out for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have a great day, guys. Bye!